Brian Chung is here with the latest edition of Yahoo U. And the COVID-19 crisis has led to a number of big name companies filing for bankruptcy. But with so much interest in trying to play the market on bankrupt companies, it's important to know who gets paid when a company goes belly up. Professor Chung, that is your cue. Well, Adam, the, the names that are filed for bankruptcy are quite big, right? Gold's Jim, JCPenney, Neiman Marcus, Hertz. These are big names that have fallen uh, into bankruptcy. But what actually happens when a company goes bankrupt? Who ends up holding the bag? And these are critical questions if you're considering investing in some of these uh, fallen bank stocks, which appears to be the case, at least for Hertz. Now, at first, we need to understand why we're talking about this in the first place. So I've got some data to show you that will hopefully illustrate a little bit of uh, the details here. So what you're looking at is uh, the U.S. speculative grade default rate. This comes from S&P uh, Global Ratings and S&P Global Market Intelligence. And this maps out the default rate among speculative grade U.S. companies or those with corporate debt that's rated double B plus or lower. And as of March 2020, you can see that the default rate was only about 3.5%, quite low when you compare it to other peaks that we've seen in previous crises. But S&P Global Ratings Research says we're not out of the rut yet. In fact, if anything, we might not even see the spike uh, just yet that it's going to come. They actually expect the default rate to hit 12.5% by March 2021. In a pessimistic scenario, they say that could even be higher, maybe as high as 15.5%. Now, in an optimistic scenario, S&P says maybe it could be somewhere around a 6%, but that would still be much higher than where we are right now. And again, a default rate of 3.5%. Now, either way, this means that the increase in default is going to raise questions about what happens to stakeholders, especially if a company goes under. So if a company goes up in smoke, this is what the capital stack looks like. The company can liquidate some assets, maybe to scrape together some money to pay all the people they owe, but there is an order to this. That's why they call this the liquidation preferences or who gets paid first. So let's say I'm a company, Chung Shoes, for example. The highest priority for me at first is to pay back any super senior, super secure debt, secure debt. These are things like revolving loans or a bank loan that I might have from the bank. And this is money that I've raised by putting up collateral. So for example, I could put up property on the Chung Shoes corporate campus, right? Those are things that have to get paid back first. After that is any unsecured debt, things like corporate bonds and also mezzanine debt or uh, convertible bonds as well, the kind of next three parts of the capital stack here. And at the very bottom, you'll notice are ordinary shares, equity, common shares of Chung Shoes that you might find on the publicly traded exchanges, for example. So if Chung Shoes goes bankrupt, this is the order of payment from top to bottom. And that's why the risk is lower for bank lenders than it is for shareholders. And oftentimes, if I'm liquidating, it means that these are the people that are, get paid, that are getting paid first with almost nothing left for the people at the bottom. Now, ahead of bankruptcy, there are some out-of-court options that I can take to restructure my debt. So one option is I could simply issue new debt or issue new shares. Now, that's fine. But first of all, A, is there any demand if people know that my company is not very good looking? Or B, if there's... If, even if I could do this, it might actually increase the amount of debt that I owe. It could just bury me further. Secondly, I could waive or amend my existing debt agreements. So for example, my bank loans have contractually defined clauses on subordination saying that I have to pay them before I can pay anybody else. Now, if I know I can get another loan from another lender or maybe, for example, through the Federal Reserve's uh, Main Street lending facility, I might want to amend those agreements to say, I might not pay you back first because I'm able to get another loan from somewhere else to keep me going for the interim. Now, if none of that works and I can't fundraise from anywhere, I'm going to have to start selling stuff, right? Maybe parts of my business, a single factory, for example. If none of that is enough, well, I might just have to sell the whole thing, sell it to another company that's interested or to private equity, as is pretty commonly the case. Now, those are all out-of-court options. Then there's also in-court restructuring. This chart shows you Chapter 11 reorganization filings from the American Bankruptcy Institute and from EPIC. Now, Chapter 11 filings have been on the rise amid COVID-19, so it shows you the pressure on these companies. In the last month, for the month of May, filings were at 722. That's well above May 2019, when only 487 companies had filed. Now, the number is quite high, and I want to note that this is not all public companies, so it's not all the Hertzes and J. Crews of the world. This, you, these are companies that could be small businesses on Main Street, for example. But regardless, bankruptcy is a big, buzzy issue right now, and you always want to know where in the capital stack you are. You want to know your liability 
And you always want to make sure that you're protected if you are making these investments. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.